Welcome to another episode of DSLR Video Shooter. Uh, my name is Caleb Pike. And today uh, we're going to be looking at the Sony A77. This is a camera that at least me and I know several other people um, were looking forward to trying out, knowing that um, it had some video features, some hopefully new things that were going to revolutionize, you know, what was coming ahead from uh, Sony in their DSLR uh, department. But I have to say, out of the gate, um, it's not nearly as impressive as I was maybe hoping and dreaming, but we'll get to that stuff. Um, the first thing I noticed is it does have a great body uh, build, much like the 7D. So there's the two next to each other. Uh, the 7D still feels a little more solid and um, you know heavier. But uh, the Sony is definitely not a cheap plasticky feel to it. Has a great grip, um, lots of buttons, uh, which is really handy. They have some similar stuff to Canon: uh, click wheel, both on the front near the shutter and on the back, um, kind of like the 7D, except it's uh, horizontal rather than a dial. Um, there is a joystick like the 7D, which I really like because I really. Um, like using the one right here. Uh, video button is on the same spot as on the 7D. Um, but there's there's really one thing that kind of destroys this camera for me, and that is its crop function. Um, on the 7D, it's an APS-C sensor. So it's the same sensor as on the A77, but the A77 has an additional crop when using the video feature. You can't turn it off, you can't work around it, and it's a fairly decent jump. Um, and I'll show you a comparison later on. But that out of the gate really um, turned me off with this camera and and it's just, I mean, we have a hard enough time getting really wide with uh, APS-C as opposed to a full frame like a 5D. So to have an additional crop is kind of a bummer, but we'll cover that a little more in detail later. Um, there are some things in this camera that are very new to us and uh, that we that I am a huge fan of. Um, and if we turn this thing around here, first thing you're going to notice is uh, this screen. And they've kind of combined the function and the way the screen works on the 5N, which is what's shooting this podcast, and the Canon 60D. So not only do you have a screen that, that goes up and down, it also rotates. So, so stuff like this, where you have the screen not only tilted up, but swiveling back and forth. Super versatile. I mean, you, you're gonna get some really crazy stuff. And uh, for people who do podcasts like me, where they don't have an assistant shooting this, um, they can flip it around just like so. Um, and it's above the camera as opposed to off onto the side. So that's really sweet, um, decent you know, monitor about the same size as uh, the ones we're used to on the Canon DSLRs. And um, the other thing, completely brand new that we've never seen before, is the translucent mirror inside this camera. So what that allows me to do is use the small OLED monitor up in the eyepiece. And um, I can't really demonstrate this well, you'd have to try one. But uh, essentially, just like your iPhone sensor, when you pull this up to your eye, the screen on the back here deactivates and an OLED turns on, um, so there's no mirror. And what that means is there's no mirror to block your sensor when you're shooting video. So you're actually able to use this small uh, OLED monitor while shooting video, and that's a big deal. So you know all those crazy things we've been gluing and magnifying on the back of our displays on uh, previous SLRs. Don't have to worry about that anymore. You can just use the one built in. Now, people were saying it was the best thing on the planet. It is really cool, um, but it is not maybe as impressive at it as uh, people were making it out to be. Um, it is 
incredible for getting framing and focus for the most part. Um, let's say if you're outside in the sun, uh, because you just can't do that with, um, you know, something like a 7D without some kind of shade or something. So that's huge. Uh, but there is an optic in between the, um, the monitor and your eye. And what it does is it magnifies that little thing. And I, I think it's a fairly uh, uh, distorted uh, piece of glass. So if you, and you can try this, if you ever get your hands on one, um, and I encourage you to do this, uh, just go back and forth linearly and you will see um, it kind of distort as you go back and forth. So I wouldn't trust it um, too much. Uh, you have to, I would also make sure that you turn the manual um, brightness on so it's not changing all the time. But to get, um, get a shot, uh, it is really nice so you're not having to bring on all kinds of other stuff. The other thing that's kind of cool with uh, this uh, Alpha mount, which is Sony's um, Pro Stills mount, is the lenses that are available. So right now this is a 50 millimeter 1.4 from Sony. Pretty affordable compared to a lot of other lenses with those specs. Um, and all this stuff, go to the website, uh, DSLR Video Shooter. I'll have show notes to links to everything, all the lenses I'm talking about and whatnot. Um, so that's a really nice lens. The other thing that excited me about this camera was the actual kit lens that you can get bundled with it. And uh, instead of a really cheap 18 to 55, you know, slow lens, you get a constant 2.8 aperture with uh, 16 to 50. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty decent piece of glass. Um, some people have noticed it's a little um, soft, but uh, to out of the gate have that range, that's a great range for shooting video. The problem though is we have that blasted crop. So the 16 on here, you're not getting nearly as wide as you would if you shot 16 on like a Canon APS-C. So that's uh, a bummer, but um, you know, that's, but it's, you know, for stills and even for video, uh, you're getting um, a fairly wide and a decent range. This would be a nice little interview lens because you can jump out, jump in, it's good stuff. And then another lens um, is this guy right here, the gorgeous, beautiful Zeiss 24 to 70. Um, and I, I'm not positive on this, but it seems that it's Zeiss glass wrapped in um, a Sony body. So it's, um, it's not the same build quality as like the ZF primes or anything like that, but it is a gorgeous lens um, with all the autofocus functions built in. It's a tank, uh, it probably weighs at least as much as my 7D does. So a couple pounds, um, but that 24 to 70 is gorgeous. It's a 2.8 constant, and I'd love to see something like this on an EOS mount, but I'm not sure what the deal is with uh, Zeiss and Sony having some kind of agreement, but uh, it is a fantastic lens. So if you are going to be looking at an A77, this guy is beautiful and really sharp, gorgeous, love it to death. So there are some cool lenses, and that's just one. You can also pick up a bunch of Zeiss primes that were made for this mount, um, and that allows you to use a lot of the autofocus features, which we're gonna get into a little bit later. So now what I wanna do is set the tripod on some sticks. Let's jump into the menus and take some uh, deeper look into that and uh, show you what that crop looks like um, on the camera. So here we are with the A77. I just have a, um, a little old school projector in the background there that we're gonna be shooting at just to show you what's going on. And the first thing I notice when I turn the camera on and off is the crazy sounds it makes. Um, so let me go ahead and turn it off and just listen. Move the switch, there it is. Wait for it. I don't know if you heard that, but pretty wild stuff and then when you turn it back on pretty nuts anyway that's just one little thing sounds like things are breaking in motors and stuff but it's it's fine so all right so um the first thing you're going to notice is i'm going to focus on that projector back there and you should see red 
lines all the way around what's in focus. That's a sweet feature that's on this camera and the Sony 5N. It's really nice because obviously it helps you find what's in focus and uh, it's it's it, you can control how much color you see in the menu as well as what color what you want yellow or red or white um, so this is red on high and you can see it's uh, pretty accurate um, and for having this when you're shooting interviews and things it can be very handy to uh, to have on and especially when you're working with a lens like this this is the 50 f 1.4 I have on here right now um, all right so the first thing I want to do is show you guys the crop factor so let me let me switch to a different mode and i'm going to switch into video and show you that first so here we are in video mode when you switch to the video dial this is the first thing you're going to see it says cat and it has these modes on uh, the left side of the screen um, i always choose manual just because i prefer shooting a manual but there's other ones on there what's really annoying is even if i select manual here and it goes into video mode. If I go away from video mode and come back, I still have to choose from this cat menu. So that's a little annoying, uh, especially when you're switching back and forth. It's kind of cheesy. You got to deal with that one intermediate menu. But so be it. That's what we're dealing with. Um, so what I'm going to do now that we've seen that is switch over to manual mode. And what I want you to watch is uh, I'm going to hit record. And I want you to focus on the screen here and watch the crop. So this is manual mode as if we were taking photos. This is what it would look like if we took a photo right now. What I'm going to do is hit record and see what happens. So you probably noticed that big jump in. Um, we saw the bottom of this stool that this old projector was standing on. Now it's cropped. So I'm going to turn recording off. Boom we're back out so um, that's the crop right there and I haven't done any tests I'll see if I can uh, put it um, on the lower part of the screen but uh, it looks to be like um, two times crop from a full frame so not 1.6 like the 70 but even more so maybe a 1.8 to 2 um, and uh, you can see that can be kind of a bummer, especially if you're in a small area and you don't have super wide glass. You're going to lose um, that. Now, the, I mean, that's close to GH2 and the Panasonic AF100 sensor size. But you still are using an APS-C sensor. So there, you are going to have um, the option to do shallower depth of field. It's just it's going to be cropped. So that's kind of a, um, a bummer. But that's what we're we're working with. And the reason I think it's cropping is because of the stabilization in this camera. This camera has pretty phenomenal stabilization. Um, a lot of us remember working with the Sony cameras with the Steadicam um, option that you can turn on. And uh, when you would turn the camera on, you would get these great handheld shots, very smooth, because of in-camera stabilization. Not lens, but in the camera. So uh, same thing here with this camera. And the way they got to do that is they got to crop in a little bit so they have some wiggle room. Same as if you try to stabilize footage in Final Cut, it's going to crop in a little bit. So I just wish you could turn it off and deactivate all stabilization and get your wider shot. But you can't. So let's go ahead and take a look over here um, real quick at our buttons. We have our joystick. There's our record button. This wheel I have assigned to the shutter speed. So you'll see right down here, we got our shutter speed um, adjustments. And there's another one on the other side of the camera on the front, right next to the uh, shutter release. And that one I have set to aperture, which you can see right here. So we'll go all the way up to 1.4. ISO is just like all the other Canon cameras on the very top of the camera. And uh, another big downer to this thing is you can't go past 1600 in video mode. Right now I'm in manual and they even have uh, it going all the way down to 50 on the ISO. But if I go over to video mode and I pick my silly cat thing, um, let's go back to ISO. 100 is the lowest I can go and we can go all the way up to 16 up oh, but no 2000 
So that's unfortunate. I know wedding people and folk that don't use light, that can be kind of a tough one. Um, so that's that's unfortunate, uh, but you know, it's something we gotta live with. Um, and we do have, uh, there's another thing that's kind of a bummer is this, this button right here normally uh, punches in and lets you see a larger image. Can't do that on this in video mode, as you see the thing telling us we can't do that. Playback. Um, another thing you're going to notice with this camera is it's rather slow in its response time. Um, so if I just hit record, takes a second, recording comes up pretty fast, but then when I hit stop recording, I hit the button, I got this screen, takes a while. Man, yeah, see how long that takes? So that's, that's not going to work for those shooting in very fast environments. Um, and to switch from playback and back um, to shooting mode, it's kind of slow. So that's kind of a quick look at the um, the camera and the buttons and whatnot. So right now I'm going to go ahead and go into the menu and show you guys all that stuff real quick. So from the top, we have image size for images. We're not taking images. We're doing video. So we're going to, you know, there's your standard stuff there, small, medium, large. Aspect ratio, um, 3, 2, and in video mode, 69 will be enabled. If you are going to shoot in manual mode, and uh, you can shoot video in manual mode, but it'll automatically crop in on you. Uh, I would recommend switching it to 69 if you're gonna be doing that. Quality, we've got raw and JPEG and extra fine and whatnot. Let's go over one. Uh, long exposure noise reduction. Doesn't matter for us because we're shooting video. High ISO noise reduction. And this I would recommend keeping to low unless you're in a high noise situation. Um, Pretty much anything that's going to adjust the image, I like to turn off or as low as possible just so that my image isn't being, you know, manipulated by settings. Uh, some flash stuff, autofocus, um, color space, steady shot. There's that steady shot. You can turn it on and off, but that will not affect the crop factor, which is unfortunate, but that's life. So we're going to leave it on. Um, exposure step. Autofocus setup, primary setup, AF with shutter and memory. And here's our one video um, section file format. So we have MP4, which is going to do crazy 14 by 1080. So we're going to put that back to AVCHD. And then um, 60 frames per second, 24 frames per second. Um, this one has a higher data rate, so I'm going to leave it on the 24. Um, FX audio recording on and off. There's no manual audio on this camera. Noise reduction and that steady shot for video. So now if we go over here, we have a set of five menus. I'm just going to fly through these real quick. Um, here's your finder LCD. There is a manual, there's a button on the top of the camera to turn switch from the uh, viewfinder to the monitor. So you see if I hover my thumb over there, it thinks I'm using the uh, EVF. So I'm going to leave that on auto because it works pretty good for switching when you just put your eye up to it. Reduction for the eye, red eye, leave that um, off. Release without lens, I have this enabled. Um, grid line, auto renew, um, display button, peaking. Here's our peaking level. High, medium, low, off. That's that red, whatever is in focus. And you can change the color to yellow or white. I think the red pops up the most and is easiest to see. And then here's where you can uh, change ice or remap buttons. So you can, uh, for instance, change this button right here, the AEL to whatever um, ISO button. Uh, this button right here, I have that set to be my magnifier. Um, so those are nice because you can customize those. Same with the dials. Um, and there's the rest of that. There's your bracketing order, drive speed. And then we have all this stuff. And this is going to be adjusting various, um, you know, lens and image issues. I turn all this stuff off. I don't want the camera to be doing any of this um, while I'm shooting video. Basic uh, playback stuff. Format. Make sure you always format before you shoot. More basic info. Menu start. Um, 
LCD and viewfinder brightness, set this to manual. And uh, I have this to plus one just so you can see better on the video, but you can go down here and adjust that. Um, so figure out what's gonna work best for you. Do not <laughs> leave that thing on um, auto though. So that'll get you in big trouble. GPS stuff, we're not worried about that. Power save, I like five minutes because it drives me absolutely crazy when the camera keeps turning off on me. And some HDMI stuff, USB connection, audio signals, cleaning mode, and then some other basic stuff. So there's a couple really cool focus features on this camera. Um, aside from just autofocus and video, which works fairly well um, if you're absolutely desperate and don't want to be doing any focus, uh, as well as some spot focus and um, tracking focus. And something I want to mention is in the middle of the screen, there's a square box. And whenever that thing turns green, whatever it's pointed at is in focus. So it's called focus confirmation, and it's a really handy thing to have on your screen. On the Canons, you can use it, but it's only in the uh, eyepiece. So to have it on the screen is phenomenal. So when, as you're focusing, whenever that thing blinks green, you know you're in focus. So um, I have it on autofocus right now, but if I was a manual focus, you could see that blink on and off as we change focus. So the first thing I want to show you is a couple focus options we have. If you click on autofocus, I use the FN button to get to our settings. Autofocus area, we have wide, zone, spot, and local. So I'm going to go back to wide here. And right now I want to show you tracking. You need to make sure it's on. So here's our object tracking, and we have it we have on and off. I have it set to on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my tripod, and I'm going to point that little box right at the top spindle of uh, this uh, old projector back there. I'm going to hit the joystick button once. And then you're given this white square, and I'm going to point it right in the middle and click again. And now it's chosen something to track. And you'll see as I move the camera around, it does a pretty good job of keeping track. Now, um, this works best when you're keeping your camera in frame, um, or your object in frame, rather. But I've actually had it where sometimes, let's try it right now, if I go out of frame, with my object and I come back in, sometimes it locks back on. So now it's, uh, it's having a hard time. It's sort of found it again. Oh, there it goes. So now it's, it's nope, it's kind of all over the place. So it's, you know, not the greatest thing on the planet, um, but it's fairly impressive of how well it, it works. This is not f face tracking. So keep that in mind. This isn't a face tracking. There is that option in the camera. But what's it, this is actually an object tracking. So that's fairly cool, and we haven't seen that before. Um, so you can assign that to an object and track focus. And that would work if I was moving in and out um, and closer or farther away from the object as well. So um, something to keep in mind is it does lock your aperture trying to help itself out so it's not shooting wide open. So there you have a quick overview of the A77. And uh, kind of in conclusion and wrapping things up, I think this camera I can really only recommend to one style of shooter. Um, otherwise, I would, I would always probably redirect someone to a different camera. But uh, with this camera's um, new features and what it does offer, I think it is really well built for somebody who doesn't want to have any kind of support gear and wants only a body and a lens, and that's all they want to work with. So I'm thinking of, I don't know, somebody who travels a lot or wants to remain incredibly inconspicuous uh, when shooting video, or maybe you know if you're into birds or something where you don't want all this stuff to bring, you just want a nice lens, maybe a zoom, and a body, then this would probably um, be a great solution for somebody like that because you aren't gonna need to add any kind of, you know, big honking viewfinder to the back of your screen because of the OLED EVF. Um, you won't need a monitor uh, because it's not fixed on the A77. It's incredibly flexible as to how you can position it. Um, with the metering, uh, you are able to get good exposure and all that kind of stuff. Focus, there's all kinds of autofocus features in video, including the tracking, which you saw earlier. So there's really a lot um, 
that uh, that could offer somebody who doesn't want to have that, including um, the steady cam built in, so the 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 smooth uh, footage you're going to get out of it handheld, so you wouldn't need to have any kind of rig with you or a very very small one if you needed one. Um, so that's where I think it shines. Stills, you know, I, we didn't. I'm not really focusing on stills, but it's it, it takes fine stills. Um, it has cool panorama and in-camera HDR and some other things that are kind of fun. Um, but in general, I think I would probably redirect people to a T3i or a 60D um, before I would recommend this one, especially with the price. Um, it's not very uh, competitive in that aspect. So um, that's, that's, for me personally, the biggest thing is that crop. Um, not getting the full sensor, even though technically we're not getting the full sensor on our uh, Canon cameras because we have line skipping, um, but we are getting a wider image and taking more advantage of the sensor size than um, this camera. So there you have it. You know, I don't, I don't know if I can really recommend it to anybody outside of that one specific niche of shooters who um, have that set of requirements, but um, there is some really cool stuff in this camera, and I really look forward to seeing what Sony's going to do with that tech. And I'd love to see them take, improve, and or fix some of the things that they've uh, developed for this camera and put that into either another form factor or in future DSLRs that offer um, a little more uh, features in the video department and, and, and without compromises like the crop and, and things like that. So. Um, right. More content coming up on DSLRVideoShooter.com. Stay tuned there. Um, look forward to seeing you guys over there. We'll be doing a lot more podcasts, articles, and I'm um, working on a mailing list, which we will start doing giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff. So hope to see you guys over there. Down Tennyson, down Tennyson.